The garden philosopher Epicurus wrote in his principal doctrines, Not what we have, but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. Today, we explore the benefits of hobbies and talk about how gardening has changed our lives. We'll take the first steps towards that new bliss by seeing what grows in our neighborhood. But first, let's make a flower arrangement. Welcome to our home in Florence, Alabama. I think it's currently 100,000 degrees outside, 100% humidity at least. At least. Um, I'm Dylan Hodges. I'm Heidi Feek. And we're Fire Kid. We're going to make a flower arrangement for our wonderful dentist, Brittany Westerman. Mm -hmm. She's back at work from being on maternity leave, so we're going to make something beautiful for her. Um, The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with some woody stems, so something sturdy, um, so that it can give our arrangement some shape. This is lemon basil that I started from seed. I can smell it. You can smell it? I can smell it. What does it smell like? Basil. Basil. (laughs) Smells like lemons, too. We'll put this little one here. I know it's overwhelming when you're starting something new. Um, Just trying to think of where to even begin. Um, That's an overwhelming thought. And at least with flower arrangements, I always start with the greenery, the foliage, and I try to get uh, stems that are pretty sturdy and strong so they can hold up the pretty flowers like the roses and dahlias and snapdragons we have today. What's that? I was really worried you were gonna ask me what this was Oh. because I don't know. So we're going to use this uh, woody stem as well that I don't know what it's called, but I like the flowers on it. This is all from our yard? Yeah. Yeah. I'm always surprised because sometimes when you're walking around outside, it doesn't look like anything's blooming, but somehow you can come into the house with uh, <laughs> buckets yeah. of flowers. <laughs> well, three and a half acres fills up a bucket pretty quickly. I can't even remember why we got started with this in the first place. <laughs> why gardening? I love gardening. I really enjoyed it, but I definitely, you know, I definitely yeah. remember. We were trying to make a second record and feeling lost in the music. We had this realization that music had become our livelihood, our life. All we talked about, uh, we're in a band together and that's an unusual situation for a couple to be in. It had stopped being fun for us. At a certain point, Heidi, you told me that we needed to get hobbies. I did, didn't I? <laughs> yes. What you got into was you did a flower right. program online. I feel like we were uh, just so focused on our career. It was like what we made money off of. It's also, I mean, it's music, so it's what we've been separately and together interested in. Started off lives. being what we loved. Our Started first, off as a hobby. Our first love. And then um, kind of turned into a career. And then we live here and we work here and it was just constant. I don't think I could handle it anymore. So yes, I did tell you we needed to get hobbies. I think for me, uh, gardening gave me a little bit of Purpose, although it's it's definitely become something that both of both you and I do we together. Both do it together, I wouldn't say that gardening is necessarily your hobby. It's no. definitely mine. What's that movie where it's about gardening and philosophy? Uh, being there. Being there. Yeah, being there. All the time, I see connections between our hobbies, whether it's the whole Epicurean philosophy or um, just how. Every gardening tip feels like a metaphor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I will say that one thing that I've learned from gardening is that 
Every plant doesn't just do well because you planted it there. It helps to have some knowledge about the plants you're growing. So we actually have a bed um, in our front yard here that doesn't have any plants in it and it just is like wasted space in the front. So we want to fill that and so we are going to walk around our town here, Florence, Alabama, and see what other people have growing. In You're being gardens. kind. What we're doing is we're going to go spy on our neighbors. The best way to see what grows in your area is to see what people are growing in your in area. Your area. <laughs> <laughs> you should trademark that. They've got hollyhocks. You see them? Oh, yeah. Ours are already spent this year. It's beautiful. Marigolds, zinnias. zinnias. What are those, pansies or something? Right here? Yeah. Begonias. Begonias. Mm -hmm. Garden. There's a lot of crepe myrtles in Florence, Alabama. They're everywhere. I don't ever notice it till right now when they're yeah, all I, blooming at once. I don't feel like their blooming season is very long. How many crepe myrtles do you think there are in Florence? I mean, can you count the drops of water in the ocean or the grains of sand? <laughs> <laughs> What is this? What is this purple thing? One thing that I definitely suggest is getting a plant ID app. That way you can identify any plants that you see. The app that I have is called Picture This, and uh, it's a really good app. Uh, I definitely suggest it. Let's see, what should we do next? Should we do lavender for a little bit of color pop? Let's put that here. That's looking great. Yeah. Growing flowers and gardening in general has been very, very nice for me. Uh, it's, you know, the first week of August. We've been in quarantine mode for five months now or something like, I'm losing track of time. I know. It's been good for my mental health just to be outside mm -hmm. and get dirty, mm -hmm. I think. One of my favorite writers, Oliver Sacks, who's really a, a neurologist, but he said that the only two non-pharmaceutical therapies that work for chronically uh, ill patients with uh, neurological disorders are gardening and music. Oh. Of course, he did music therapy on his patients, and he wrote a, a book called Musicophilia, I which I, which I think I have on the shelf over there, yeah. uh, about music therapy. Why don't you pick the next flower? Let's do this dahlia. Okay. I've been watching Gardener's World, so I'm yeah, calling it Yeah, that's very a, British of you. A dahlia. A dahlia. Or a dahlia, as some have as some have said. Did you know that the dahlia is in the potato family? You're a genius. These are Madame Butterfly Snapdragons? They are. Uh, these are Heidi's favorite. They are my favorite. Everybody always asks me what my favorite flower is. And I think it's the Madame Butterfly Snapdragons. Specifically, the I think these are called bronze colored. They're just so, so beautiful. beautiful. Can I have some hibiscus? We have a hibiscus forest we do. that grows at the edge of our driveway. We did not put it there, but we're very grateful. I'll have some more, please. One of the things about hibiscus that I like, and they're similar to irises in this way, once this bloom, let's say this bloom is blooming today, and once that is finished blooming, there's another one right behind it. Uh, so even though they don't last too long, there's always one not too far behind. Yeah, I feel like having a hobby has definitely made us more 
three-dimensional people, if that makes sense. It's nice to spend time doing something that I'm not trying to make a living on. Something because you enjoy it. Yeah. With a hobby, I feel like um, it's something that you could, or that I could do for hours without ever even noticing time has passed by. Do you feel that way? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll get lost in the pages of a book or weeding the garden and I'll realize it's supper time. Yeah. <laughs> Will you hand me the love in a mist seed pods? This is really just uh, an exam for me to see how well I, I listen. I mean, you only have about love in a mist. three choices there. This is love in a mist, um, Nigella. And it usually, uh, it has these flowers that are gorgeous. These were blue ones before and they were really pretty. But now um, they've developed seed pods and it just adds a really nice texture to an arrangement. Let's put some zinnias in there. Zinnias are cool because you can do a, uh, what they call the wiggle test. Have I showed you the wiggle test with the zinnias? Oh, I've seen the wiggle test. Yeah. <laughs> so you go to up to your zinnias and you wiggle the stems. And if the stem is straight and doesn't fall when you wiggle it, it's ready to be cut. Yeah. These came up from last year. We didn't yeah, even didn't plant, plant them. them. They're annuals. These were some volunteers. Meaning they only grow once, but these chose to not, not uh, go away. No, they like it here. We just gotta fill in some gaps. How's it looking to you, Dilly? Looks perfect. Do you think it's missing anything? Could there be a poo? Not the most flattering name, but it's it's I don't know. from what Pooh Bear. What about the yarrow? You want to put it in? Oh yeah. Hey, fills it out nice. In Kaczynski's political satire, being there, yes. every gardening tip is interpreted as a metaphor for life. It is possible for everything to grow strong. It's easy to assign meaning and see ourselves reflected in the things we plant. In this season of our lives, clay soil, full sun, and community are just what we need to flourish. Well, it's been great spending time with y'all. Until next time. Find something you love and do it every day.